Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Don from Avalon Advanced Materials. How are you today? Great, thanks. Good to be back, Tracy. Well, I have so many questions for you today. So right out of the gate, Don, can you talk to us about the OR Act? We've had Jack Lifton's opinion, but what we really want is your opinion. Well, the OR Act I see is, uh, is a great start. Um, there's no doubt that if we're going to see these rare earth supply chains uh, established in North America, government has to help by providing incentives to business and entrepreneurs to make that whole supply chain happen. Ten years ago, we tried and didn't quite get there, but um, <clears throat> it's not as simple as just starting a new mining operation and everything will happen easily after that. And I think it's encouraging that they recognize that now, that they do need to uh, provide these incentives and maybe we'll actually start to see them. Don, of course, Jack was telling us that the OR Act was the most disruptive announcement he's seen in the industry to date. But of course, let's not discount the COVID-19 pandemic. It's our observation that this has only increased the interest in critical materials. Um, so can you speak to how Avalon's business model has not only been basically one step ahead for resolving our sustainability issues in North America, but been a leader and how you plan on moving forward, please? Well, there's no doubt that um, the whole COVID-19 pandemic has raised awareness in the public on the vulnerability of our <clears throat> supply chains here in North America to relying on a sole source of supply, especially when it comes from a country like China. So it's reminded people that we've got to start doing this and it's got government thinking about it a lot. And I think now that um, we have created that awareness and there's now more urgency to do something about it in the context of COVID-19 too, because of the economic problems that are now emerging and we need to restart the economy and what a beautiful way to do it than incentivizing the creation of the, some of these new supply chains so it reduces the risk of a repeat down the road and we hope to be one of the leaders in that. Well, speaking of being a leader, you have a lot of Avalon fans out there. And I mean, I, I saw your, your stock movement again on Friday and, of course, the volume. Uh, let's talk about your projects that you've got going on, how they're progressing and what your priorities are. So, yeah, um, increasingly uh, we're seeing real opportunities with our uh, separation wrap is lithium project. As you know, we've had that project a long time, over 20 years now, <clears throat> and it's been a matter of being ready to serve new markets when they emerge for the forms of lithium that we have there. And we're seeing lots of opportunity now to do that. There's a whole lot of innovation happening in the glass ceramic space too, that uh, prefers a form of lithium such as we have there in our high purity mineral petalite. And, of course, the demand from the battery sector is uh, is continuing to grow as well. We want to see that supply chain created here in uh, North America, and we think we can make that happen here in uh, in Ontario, especially now that we've got the resource and the interest from government to uh, see it happen. So we're going to take advantage, and hopefully this year we'll get that um, <clears throat> project moving forward, the bulk sampling stage we hope to get started last year. Okay, well, speaking of innovation, many clean tech materials have very costly, ineffic inefficient extraction processes, but Avalon, and I th I've got this in quotes, is working on implementing some new technologies to extract valuable elements from waste materials that can offer potential for near-term near -term revenue streams. Can you talk to us about this, please, Don? Yeah, that's an area we've been interested in for a while, actually, and um, new processing technology is offering more and more possibilities for doing that. And there are a lot of historic mine waste that were mined for one traditional commodity in the past that might have had half a dozen others that had no market six years ago or 50 years ago that do now. And so that's the opportunity. And actually, I'm seeing more and more uh, companies out there are starting to uh, look at the same opportunity. 
including some of the majors and uh, thinking about whether they can extract more value out of the tailings and waste streams from current operations that may contain other critical minerals. So we see that as a great opportunity and uh, it's all about coming up with more efficient extraction processes because typically the concentrations of the elements of interest will be low in those waste materials. But if you come up with an efficient low cost process, it's a huge opportunity and, and we're working on a few ideas there now. Well, speaking of opportunities, all of you investors out there that are looking for uh, undervalued companies. I, I don't even know where to begin with you, Don. You've certainly been a leader in the industry and you have some very sophisticated projects. So I, I think what we really want to ask you right now is what would be a fair market valuation for Avalon stock? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I get asked that a lot, obviously. And um, if our lithium project starts to be the kind of a lead play in our story, then I think uh, it's not unrealistic to see us start to move towards the kind of market valuation that uh, was reflected in the business model in our 2018 updated PEA, which showed an NPV at an 8% discount rate of over $150 million. So I don't see why we shouldn't start moving towards say valuation uh, consistent with that as we show the market that we're well on our way to achieving the levels of production and cash flow that that model indicated were possible there. Well, um, I, of course, I have to ask you, what's the latest on the, on the Nechalacho project? Uh, Investor Intel audience members, I've actually gone to the North, Northwest Territories and been on this project site, so it's a particular favorite of mine. <laughs> Yeah, so um, uh, basically Cheetah are ready to go with the uh, work program that we worked out with them on the <coughs> North Tea deposit, with the small scale initial production. It's been delayed because everything's kind of on lockdown there because of the pandemic, but uh, they think they'll be able to get going this summer with the site work there to start extracting that um, sample and start doing that uh, processing work to produce the concentrates. and working on the next step on leaching the concentrates um, with the cooperation of the Saskatchewan Research Council to create that next mixed rare earth product and see where we go from there. Well, thank you so much for that update. For me, Don, I really appreciate it. And of course, we have this fall, we have the presidential election. We also have the, the issues happening in Hong Kong presently. We have the COVID-19. We have the, the trade wars happening. This all drawing more attention to critical materials. Yeah, any comments on how you perceive this uh, playing out here in the fall or, you know, as obvious from this conversation, I guess everyone needs to pull up their sleeves and really be looking at the critical materials. Don, comments on this, please. Well, there's no doubt that there is increasing uh, trade tensions between uh, China and the U.S. And if that continues to grow to outright uh, hostility, then for sure there's a real risk here of um, China weaponizing their control of the supply chains on rare earths and other uh, critical minerals. And that's just going to create um, more media headlines on the need to take action prices will go up and we'll probably see a similar circumstance that we saw 10 years ago. Let's hope so. <laughs> yes. And so on that, on that point, what should Avalon Advanced Material shareholders anticipate perhaps this fall? Because undoubtedly COVID-19 has impacted the goals that you had prior to the pandemic. Well, I think that um, the awareness is going to continue to grow. And as long as we're able to kind of uh, get back on the ground and start doing some physical work to uh, prove our products and get some uh, markets established, then I think we're, our story is going to continue to grow and attract uh, more and more investor interest. Have you been able to put a strategy in play for that already? Or are you still waiting to see uh, how the isolation plan, you know, plans uh, play out? We're ready to go uh, when uh, when we're allowed to, basically, and hopefully that'll be within a, a month or so, so that in July we can get on the ground and start uh, doing some work. The, the path 
looks clear now in terms of barriers to entry. There are companies that are willing to offer us capital to help get it going, so we're not uh, worried about that. And um, it's all systems go as soon as the lockdown is lifted. Well, Don, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the update. My pleasure, Tracy.